the tentacles, the row of suckers, the bulbous eyes. Most aquariums that have kept these creatures have tales of their great escapes. Octopuses are notoriously difficult to contain. In 2016, an octopus at New Zealand's National Aquarium made a break for freedom by slipping out its tank, sliding down the drainpipe, and escaping into the ocean. Another at the UK's Brighton Aquarium would sneak into neighbouring tanks at night to eat the fish before returning to its own tank by morning. In captivity, they've learned to navigate simple mazes, solve puzzles, and open jars. And in the wild, they've used objects as tools, like hiding inside coconut shell halves. This apparent problem-solving ability has earned them the reputation as the most intelligent invertebrate. The octopus belongs to the class of cephalopods, along with the squid, cuttlefish, and nautilus. Cephalopods are the largest of all mollusks. They have a long evolutionary history that stretches over 500 million years, emerging during an explosion of animal diversity in the Cambrian period. Modern cephalopods appeared in the sea at the same time as bony fish, more than 200 million years ago. The old cephalopods are virtually extinct, with the only living representative being the shell-bearing nautilus, which probably diverged from monoplacophoran-like ancestors. Today, cephalopods have the largest and most complex nervous system of all invertebrates. While octopus brains are formed by clusters of ganglia like other invertebrates, their relative size instead resembles that of vertebrates. For example, Smaller mollusks like sea slugs have only around 20,000 nerve cells. But for this reef octopus, around 500 million make up its body, ranking it closer in number to dogs. Some parts of the octopus brain even show a strikingly similar organisation to the vertebrate brain, particularly the areas involved in learning and memory, which makes it an interesting case for convergent evolution. But convergent evolution can't fully explain why intelligence evolved in cephalopods. In large-brained vertebrates, intelligence may have evolved because it meets the challenges of finding and processing food, as well as the demands of group living, like maintaining complex social bonds. Smart animals tend to be long-lived, since a large brain both takes a long time to grow and helps an animal avoid life-threatening danger. So overall, intelligence typically co-evolves with a slow life history in response to socio-ecological challenges. Apes, elephants, whales, dolphins, parrots, and crows, they all share these traits. But cephalopods don't. Most are solitary animals that aren't above cannibalism. Even those that swim in groups like some squid don't form the deep social bonds that chimps or dolphins do. Cephalopods also tend to live fast and die young. Most don't live longer than two years, and many even die after their first bout of reproduction. This combination challenges the most accepted theory on the evolution of intelligence. Octopuses evolved complex brains together with a fast life history in basic social environments. But how? This paper, published in Trends in Ecology and Evolution, suggests a simple explanation and it's that their ancestors lost their shells. Around 530 million years ago, an ancient group of snail-like mollusks slowly underwent a dramatic transformation. Their protective shell became a buoyancy device. By filling it with gas, they could more easily swim along the ocean floor, and then over it. They became the first cephalopods. For generations, they and their descendants kept their shells, and throughout the Paleozoic, they diversified intensely. The chambered shell took on a vast variety of shapes. These included straight cones and highly curved shells, but many groups arrived at a spiral design as seen in the extinct Ammonites, which appeared over 400 million years ago in the Devonian period and lasted until the end of the Mesozoic. 
but competition from faster, shallow water fish may have forced them to become more agile, or drove them into deeper waters too challenging for their buoyant shells. And around 275 million years ago, their outer shell disappeared. While the cuttlefish and squid ancestors internalized theirs, the octopus ancestor lost it completely. No longer encumbered, cephalopods became nimble, which helped them to better escape predators and catch prey. They also expanded into a wide range of marine habitats, from tropical to polar waters, and fed on many more kinds of food. But cephalopods feed on prey that can be difficult to spot and catch. It's a time-consuming process. They rely heavily on using their arms to extract prey from crevices or even shells, which can be challenging. For example, crabs, the staple food source, have powerful pincers and can potentially exhaust an octopus. This complex foraging behaviour may have favoured the evolution of intelligence because it requires a higher level of cognition. Losing the protective shell also created some issues. Cephalopods became more vulnerable. They were easy meals to predators and to each other. In cephalopods, cannibalism is widespread, especially during mating. This onslaught of threats drove not only defences like ink and colour-changing skin, but perhaps also intelligence. Larger brains may have supported fast decision-making and flexible mating strategies, allowing them to survive challenging environments. Take the Nautilus, the only living cephalopod who kept its shell. It's much closer to the old cephalopods that appeared around 500 million years ago. The protective armour reduces its risk of being eaten, and this may be why it can live for up to 20 years. But only a few species still exist, perhaps because they were outcompeted by their faster, smarter cousins. In fact, Nautiluses even have smaller brains, and yet they can still outsmart other mollusks as their brain supports basic learning mechanisms. This may mean cephalopods were always pre-adapted for intelligence only making the dramatic leap after losing their shells. Predation and complex feeding behaviours may have driven this evolution, and at some stage they radiated. Today, there are around 300 octopus species, ranging from less than an inch in length to the giant Pacific, which spans 20 feet from tentacle to tentacle. This octopus rests peacefully, with confidence in its cognitive abilities, with confidence that he'll slide through the trickiest of situations the way he was born to.